Then the cataclysm rocked the world. Atlantis and Lemuria sank, and the Pictish islands were heaved up to form the mountain peaks of a new continent. Sections of the Thurian continent vanished under the waves, or sinking, formed great inland lakes and seas. Volcanoes broke forth, and terrific earthquakes shook down the shining cities of the empires. Whole nations were blotted out. That, my friends, is the end of Cull's world, and today we're talking about the end of King Cull. Welcome, my friends, welcome to the stately Vaughn Manor and the Robert E. Howard Show. It is the Robert E. Howard Show once again. It's a day late, but it's here. So we are talking about the end of King Cull. We've been talking about King Cull for a little while now. Last time we talked about Cull, we were talking about a story called By This Axe I Rule. That is the story that was uh, rejected by Weird Tales. But Robert E. Howard took that story, he transformed it, added a supernatural element, changed the character of Cull into the character of Conan the Sumerian, and it became the first Conan story, uh, The Phoenix on the Sword, which was a really good story and a great beginning for Conan, for the Conan series. I actually prefer the Conan version of that story uh, by quite a bit, actually. By this axe I rule was good, but I think the Phoenix on the Sword was better. I think it was quite a bit better. After Robert E. Howard wrote By This Axe I Rule, he was not finished with Cull. He did write a story called Swords of the Purple Kingdom, which was a story that was never published. Uh, again, it was never published during Robert E. Howard's lifetime. It was published years later uh, in the Lancer edition of the Cull stories, I believe. Uh, that was the first appearance of uh, Swords of the Purple Kingdom. That is a good story, actually. It has points of real excellence. However, it is very similar in many respects to this, to by this axe I rule. And then, and that once again, we have a coup attempt against the king, and they're trying to take down the king once again. And again, we have the two lovers who cannot be together for reasons, and only Cull can bring them together. So we have those two ideas make their reappearance. We have a tremendous battle uh, where Cull fights uh, a bunch of guys, which is feels very similar to the battle that he had in By This Axe I Rule, uh, the difference being that he does get help in the battle in Swords of the Purple Kingdom. It was a good story. Uh, it wasn't the best, but it was good. However, apparently it wasn't good enough uh, because like I said, it was never published. And I don't know whether he ever submitted it at all anywhere and whether it was rejected or whether he just at this point was said, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother sending this in because he had not had great luck uh, with his past few call stories. So that is the last story in this volume that is just a call story. Cull returns, though, in Kings of the Night. Kings of the Night, which is the last full story in this volume. Uh, that is a team-up where... A team-up between King Cull and Bran MacMorn, the Pictish King. King Cull is transported into the future by magic uh, to help Bran MacMorn fight the Romans. It is a cool story. In fact, it is a really good story. One of his best, I think. And we finally get to see King Cull as a leader of men in battle. And so that is really cool that we finally get to see that. Uh, and Cull is a strong presence in that story. Although, I have to say, he's kind of a secondary character. It is more of a Bran MacMorn story than it is a Cull story. But that is the last appearance of Cull in Robert E. Howard's fiction. And much like Cull's world, which was destroyed by a cataclysm and transformed into the Hyborian Age, the Cull series was transformed 
and became the Conan series in a way. And that a lot of the things that he was working on in this series uh, were worked out during these stories. And so when he moved on to the Conan stories, you have a much more polished uh, series of stories. You have a series of stories which is much more successful uh, as far as storytelling and, well, pretty much on every level, the Conan stories, I feel like, are superior to the Cull stories. He worked out a lot about how to write that kind of story. But the Cull stories, in their way, are kind of unique. Cull's world is much more shadowy, it's much darker, it's much more mysterious uh, than the Hyborian Age, with all, which all, with all of its dark magic and horrors. There's something mysterious and dreamlike about Cull's world. And Cull, as a character, was so very different than Conan. A much, much broodier, a much darker character, in a way. Uh, a character who was not interested in women at all. I mean, at all, which is very different than Conan. Uh, he didn't seem to have any kind of romantic feelings at all, Cull. He just wasn't interested in that kind of thing. No romance for Cull. It didn't bode well for his succession. Um, so we don't really know what happened to Cull in Cull's kingdom after this book. There, there are no hints in Robert Howard's fiction as to what happened uh, to Cull and to uh, how he finally ended his days. Did he remain a king? Was he finally taken down? People were always trying to take this guy down. Did they finally... Did, did Cull's enemies finally succeed? Like I said, there didn't seem to be much chance that he would have an heir. So we don't know. Uh, we get this little bit of Cull's life in this volume. As a series of stories, this was an uneven series of stories. The quality varied quite a bit in this volume. So it's markedly different uh, from the Solomon Cain stories that we talk, talked about before where the quality was much more consistent. The series of stories worked much better as a series of stories than this one does. Because this one suffers from having a lot of these stories not being published during his lifetime. He didn't think any, these stories would ever be published at all. And so you, you have some oddities. Char we have characters appearing in these stories with the same names but are clearly different characters. Uh, plot points used over and over and over again uh, because, you know, the stories that they were written in were never published. So he felt like he'd just keep working at them until they finally were published and they weren't. So it's, it's an uneven reading experience. But the, despite that, it is fascinating. Some of the stories in this are really, really good. Um, the Shadow Kingdom remains one of Robert E. Howard's greatest stories. The Mirrors of Tuz and Thun is a really, really good story and very different from a lot of the other stories that Robert E. Howard wrote. Uh, even, there are even moments in some of the lesser stories in this volume that are really intriguing and really well written and really interesting. And the character of Cull is always interesting to revisit because like I've said before, Cull was a lot more like Robert E. Howard, the man, than, Cull, than Conan ever was. Conan was the guy Robert E. Howard wanted to be. Cull, he was more like the guy that Robert E. Howard actually was. At least it seems that way to me. And so that is always interesting to take a look at in reading these stories. And as I said, the end of Cull, the character, is a mystery. We never really know what finally happened to this character. But it's a worthwhile experience. Uh, I really enjoyed revisiting the Cull stories once again. And this is an important, it's an important part of Robert E. Howard's career when he was writing these stories. This time in his career where he was experimenting and working things out and solidifying some of his ideas about how to write this kind of story. And in the process, creating 
uh, modern sword and sorcery. Uh, reinventing the genre. I, I don't believe that he actually did create sword and sorcery. Um, I think you have to hand that to Lord Dunsany. But he certainly did refine that kind of story, and he did transform it into something new. And for that alone, these are valuable stories. Next week, we're going to be talking about another great hero of Robert E. Howard's, a hero we've mentioned quite a bit in talking about Cull, Bran MacMorn, a character who was actually a descendant of Brule the Spearslayer, a character in the Cull stories. So there's a direct connection between the Cull series and the Bran MacMorn stories. Uh, heck, they even meet each other, uh, despite living ages apart. This is an interesting book. It's going to be an interesting book to go through because we don't just have the stories of Bran MacMorn. We have every story that he wrote about picks in this book that were not part of Conan or Cull. And that's a lot of stories. So this is interesting. It's going to be an interesting uh, set of stories to talk about. Has a couple of the greatest stories he ever wrote in this book. So, yeah, we'll be talking about Bran MacMore next time. Thank you for joining me as we've talked about Cull, and I will see you next time here at Stately Vaughn Manor for The Robert E. Howard Show. I'll catch you next time, guys. Bye now.